Hello and welcome to this demonstration on Deep Exploration 6.0. I'm going to spend the next 30 minutes or so giving you an overview of the capabilities of this software and showing you how easy it is to get stunning results from your CAD models. Before we start, I'll give you a brief overview of the user interface. You have your main viewport in the center of the screen here and you can see at the top of the window here then we've got our standard Windows drop down menus and our toolbars which run along the, uh, run along the top there. Now, we also have quite a unique way of working in deep exploration. You can see these little tabs which I, which I went through there. They're context sensitive, so depending on what you're working on, whether it's a, a rendering or a markup or an illustration, then you can set your toolbars to be sensitive to that, to that workflow. We also have a concept or the concept of, of layouts as well. And the layout is the, the entire screen that you're, that you're seeing here, all of the different, different menus, all of the different uh, toolbars and we can load and save different layouts depending on what we're working on. You can see that the one I'm working on here is called, is called Demo. Now, Deep Exploration started, started life as a viewer and because of that we can see that it can open lots of different formats, um, not, only two, uh, not only 3D but also 2D formats as well. And we can see that from this, from this list here. Now the basis of this demonstration is going to be on native ProEngineer files and I've saved uh, or preloaded some ProEngineer files here of this, this transmission assembly which you can see on the screen. Now we can orientate this around, we can highlight different, different models, we can see that our product structure is, uh, is fully intact in the scene tree on the left hand side. We can also look at different views, so top, uh, left and, and front views there and we can also toggle whether or not we look at this in, in perspective. Now, we can also see the, the different or see different views within our viewport. Uh, we can use a, a four view layout as you can see here. And this is particularly useful for people coming from different CAD backgrounds or different, different visualization tool backgrounds. For this demonstration, we use a single view layout. Let's just orientate this around. And what we can, what we can see here is that we can, we can quite simply, quite easily hide off different components. So just hiding off these, these casings here. And as I said, these are native Pro Engineer files. And as you'd expect from a, from quite a high end CAD system, then these files are incredibly detailed. So we can just look at the, look at the internal gearing systems there, and just put those, put those casings or unhide those casings. We've also got different viewing tools. So we can see on the display toolbar at the top here, we can look at it as a space claim. We can see our model as a, as a solid, just shaded model. Uh, also transparent, we can see here uh, in wireframe. Technical illustration, now we'll deal with technical illustrations in more detail later on in this demonstration. We can also see here a shaded and also some, some more space claims. Now the translation of CAD data from one system to another is something that has traditionally been quite tricky. Any engineer will tell you that that is quite a, it can sometimes be, be a difficult thing to do. Now for that reason, there are tools available within deep exploration to, to flip normals, to flip surfaces, and to heal geometry if it comes in, and the translation is not 100%. Not we also have tools to reduce the size of your models. And that's what we look at here. If we want to reduce the, the size of this, this shaft, then we can turn down the graphics translation when that's, when that's brought in. So what we can say is that you know, we could remove, we say there, 79%. And we can see there that the, that the translation of the graphics has been turned down. And we can do that for any, any different or any of these components. We'll just undo that quickly. Now, another aspect to these, to these tools is that we could remove all the internal components if we were creating a a high high level rendering of this of this casing then it wouldn't be necessary for us to see all of the internal components so what we can do is we can remove all those internal components so we can see here just set this to, to maximum speed and process this what we'll see when this is finished processing is we'll hide this main casing and all of those internal components have have been removed and that will really speed up our processing and regeneration time and allow us uh, much better graphics on the, on the screen. Now, as I mentioned, when we're looking at 
Pro Engineer, native Pro Engineer files, and what I want to show you is the is the difference in in file size. So we'll see here these these native Pro Engineer files. That entire assembly is 181 megabytes. Now I've previously opened up the this and saved it as an RH file. So .rh is the is the file format which is native to deep exploration. And we can see with with no compression and, and not using any of those tools which I which I just showed you, and this file size comes in at 4.3 megabytes. And that's a significant reduction in, in file size there. And what I'll do is for the rest of this demonstration we'll we'll work on those native RH files. And what we'll see here is when I open up this file, there'll be no loss of quality um, in graphics or in data whatsoever. So we just hide off those external casings again. Then we can see then this RH file, which is a fraction of the size of our, our Pro Engineer files. We've still got all the internal uh, detail uh, that we uh, that we need to or that we want to work with on this on this file. Let's just hide these these casings off again, and we can see that we've got all those uh, all that detail in place. So let's move on to the first section of this demonstration, and that's that's markups. Markups are, are an area which are very important to the design process. Sending models off or, or getting getting people to verify the work that's been done is very important. Markups will traditionally consist of notes, of dimensions, and of detailed views. So we have various tools available in Deep Exploration to address this situation. Let's move to our markup tab here. And we can see on the right hand side then we've got various views which have which have already been been saved for us. So go and activate these views. And we can see here are our, here are some of our markups. So we've got some dimensions, we've got some we've got some notes. Let's go to another view. And we can see here some more dimensions, some more notes, and some other markups on this view. And it's very simple and very easy to save these views. And, and convey this this uh, this data to to other engineers or other designers or other or even just other departments. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and create some markups on this model and then and then save the view. So the first thing we might want to do is we'll just orientate this round, and we'll work on work on this end this end here. So let's add some dimensions, and just pick on this surface and this surface. And we can just add a, a very simple, simple dimension there. If we want to add a, a radius on one of these, on one of these holes, then we can just drag that out like so. And notes. So notes are a very important thing. We'll have a, a note with a, with a, uh, with a leader. Just double click on that note to say uh, to enter some, enter some text. We can also add uh, another note to this little lever on the top here. Okay, and another aspect of detailed uh, of uh, of markups would be a, would be a detailed view. So we can just drag a little little circle around the the area that we want to create a detailed view of, and we see our, our detailed view is created there. And embedded within that view is a is your 3D model, so you can rotate and spin that around and interrogate that without having to zoom in on the actual model. So just uh, hit the create new new view icon there, and we can go in and change the just change the name of that. Some modifications needed, and we can also look at some uh, some more advanced things here. So whatever orientation this this model is in, then we'll say that it will take two seconds to to fly to that specific view, and then we can just say OK, and, uh, and create this view. So you can see if we go back to our standard view, then we've got no notes, and this is the new view that we've just created. So that's a brief overview of markups. Now with Deep Exploration, it's very easy to capture assembly and disassembly processes. So this could be used for shop floor or manufacturing or customer instructions, and you can capture assembly and, and disassembly processes. Now I've created a couple of processes, disassembly processes here already. So as you can see the, the short animations go through some of the main steps that need to be done to remove some of the main internal gearing systems.
Each of these steps is made up of several very simple animation sequences and we can see those animation sequences here. Just orientate this, this model around. Just zoom in so you can so you can see them clearly. And just drag this slider up and down, you can see how those bolts unscrew and and then come out and this uh, and this plate. So we could very, very easily create a new sequence and that's what I'm going to do now is take you through creating a, a new sequence and then bundling it together in a in a new step so just create the sequence here and go to the properties and we'll call this remove bolts so what we'll do is we will we'll remove these blue bolts that you can see and some washers and then we'll uh, we'll take away that that main casing so it's a, a very simple process that we literally just record what we're what we're doing on the screen so in the case of this bolt then we'll just rotate it to unscrew it there and just move it up slightly and we'll do exactly the same for the for the second bolt on the on the bottom there just rotate it around like so and then just move it out slightly and that's the first part of the of the sequence done so then we'll just move the sequence to the very end and again just record what we what we're doing on the screen so what I'll do here is just as you see just move this move this bolt clear of the of the main housing and the second one that's our simple sequence created unscrewing those bolts and just removing them clear of the main housing so we're going to go ahead and create a, a second one and this one will be to deal with the with the washers and we we'll just move those washers clear of that of that housing like so this is a very simple procedure and it could be invaluable for if you can imagine sort of maintenance departments you know manufacturing shop floor instructions they can look at these animations they can go in they can interrogate exactly what's uh, exactly what's going on really get in and see the the details of this assembly or or disassembly process I'm going to create a, a third one here just move that front purple panel that we sure you can see on the side there Another uh, another big advantage, I guess, of uh, of creating animations would be you know you could use this for a website. We can render this to a high quality rendering. Okay, we see uh, we've removed that panel, and I've already got one saved of just uh, of just removing that main housing. You see, that's just a case of turning the transparency down on that casing. So I'll just reorder them, and we can go back to our processes and procedures, and just simply create a new step so we've got three steps already created we're going to create a new one called uh, remove main housing and exactly the same as on our markups then we can look at some more more detailed aspects of this so however the model is orientated then we will we'll say um, it can take a few seconds to orientate to that we'll just add these different animation sequences I say we'll fly to uh, in say three seconds. So now what we can do is we can play all of our steps in order. It's also a very, very versatile system as well. What we're dealing with here is is disassembly process. However, you know what happens on the on the shop floor. What happens if someone wants to know how to assemble it? Well, we can take that step that we've that we've just created. We can quite simply duplicate it, 
and then reverse that step. So we can see here, well, this can now be used for, for manufacturing your shop floor and showing how to assemble. We can also render this to, to, a, to an AVI or, or multiple different formats there. Send that out, possibly put that on the website. So we'll now have a look at the rendering side of things in deep exploration. And for this part of the demonstration, we're going to use a subassembly of this transmission. Uh, so we can really see some, some detail in the output. And that subassembly is going to be, so on here you can see on the screen, just this shaft with the spring at the bottom, gears on the side with the, with the bearing. Now photorealistic renderings are becoming more and more important in the, in the design environment. They can be used by designers and engineers to visualise a product in its natural environment. They can also be used by marketing departments for, for advertisements, for websites and so on. Um, you know, the, the, one, of the, one of the main advances, I guess, of, of using these is that, is that you don't have to pay for an expensive prototype or, or photo shoot. And you can use that uh, CAD data which is already available to you. So this is the, this is the sub-assembly that we're going to be, be working on. And one of the first things we need to do is to add some add some sort of material and and colour to this to this model. Now, by default, the model will come in with the with the colours just pulled through from the from the CAD model. And you can see they're they're listed in our, in our scene tree um, materials one to six, and they just just reference the uh, um, the default colours from the CAD model, as I say. Now. Deep Exploration comes with an extensive library of, of realistic, very realistic um, materials and we can flick through those, those materials here. You can see we've got different metals, um, different colours, different paints, uh, all the way down to, to stone and, and concrete um, and different materials as well. Now if I want to add a material then I simply drag and drop it as you saw just then. Uh, we don't have to mess around doing anything else, we just simply drag and drop that onto the onto the component we want that material to be added to. Now materials are, are really a, a quite a complex subject and, and really a, a subject in their own but to give you a, to give you a brief overview um, of the materials then you can see here that that's, that carbon fiber which I've added to the shaft has been added to my to my materials list in my scene tree. We can look at the look at the properties here we can see that this is a HDR material that stands for high dynamic range and we can see uh, the type of material it, it deals with um, we could specify like a, a high gloss paint or, or a matte finish there um, color different maps so we can define different uh, different images different jpegs we see the one there for the uh, for the carbon fiber um, if we want to specify a 3d texture is embedded into this into this component and we can specify a bump map We've also got uh, what, what is being reflected in that, in that material as well. So I'm just going to change uh, the scale of that, of that carbon fibre from uh, uh, 10 to, to 6 so we can just see that a little bit, a little bit more clearly in our, in our rendering. And what we need to do is, is go through here and pick various different materials for our, for our different components. So for this, uh, for this spring then we can add a, a brass, um, brass material. Okay, so now we've got all our materials added and we can orientate this round into a, a view that we're, we're happy with. Now there are several different renderers within Deep Exploration. They deal with the rendering of the viewport and the, the rendering of the screen. Depending what graphics card you have and the specification of that graphics card sort of depend on, on which renderer you use. But for these high resolution and photorealistic images that we want to create, then we want to use the high dynamic range real-time driver. High dynamic range is basically a set of techniques for the computer to accurately calculate light definitions. And it's this light definition that gives the images its realistic and photographic quality. With the HDR render mode comes the concept of environment maps. And environment maps are very high resolution 360 degree images of a certain environment. And Deep Exploration comes with a library of these environment maps and allows you to place your models into these environments for, for a more realistic image. So for example, you know, we could place this assembly into a lighting studio as it is at the moment or you know, into something a bit more, bit more true to life. So we have this outback um, scene here and you can see the, the reflection there in our, in our sort of chrome, chrome shaft. And, and we can really, really get those, those high quality images that's, uh, that are required here. 
Again, you know, in another environment map, another standard environment map is this one of a grass scene um, or a hotel lawn. We can orientate these round and put it exactly how we want it. So for this particular rendering, then what we'll do is use one of the, the studio setups. So once you've got an environment that you're happy with and a set of materials that you're happy with and your model's orientated around correctly, so you've got one more thing to do basically before you render this image and that is to map to the UV. What that means is we want to map these, these materials, and you can see it just went through the process there. We want to map those materials to these 3D models. The process of mapping takes that 3D model and unwraps it into a 2D state so it can more accurately calculate the exact light definition on those surfaces. So you can see here how that's been mapped to 2D and those light calculations are much easier to, to generate. So we're going to uh, render this image. We'll put it on a relatively low setting for this, so it renders a bit a bit quicker. You can see here we can we've got a lot of advanced settings, and we'll set this set this rendering. So once this has has rendered, then we'll we'll see the the real quality of this of this renderer. One of the things that's quite difficult with uh, with rendering is certainly um, the the metals and the and the glass. And you can see from from this image what a you know what a realistic render that we that we come out with, and this is on a on quite a low quality setting. Now, if you don't want to use uh, one of those environment maps, you can use any 2D image as a background as well. So this is quite a clever aspect of this system, is you can take the 3D lighting environment from this studio, but we can apply a 2D image uh, as a background. I'll simply uh, drag and drop this this 2D image and we can select it, we can scale it and, uh, and move it around so that, so that we get the exact view that we want. And just move this into, into position and just orientate our model around, make sure it all fits in our output size. And again we can then just hit the, uh, hit the render, render button and we'll see this image image created. And there we go, that's that image pretty much done. Again, you can see the bit of grain on the uh, on the shadow there, but but overall an impressive result on a bit of a low quality setting. So I've got some images here which I've previously rendered. Um, this is on a uh, on more of more of a higher setting, and you can really see you know, if we zoom into certain areas, then we get get an amazing realistic image. And you can imagine the the money that you could uh, that save um, through not having to build certain prototypes and and pay for photo shoots. We can just use that CAD data and render these uh, amazingly good quality images. There's some other images here. Uh, they're playing this uh, this engine assembly and they've all been done using deep exploration. So that's a, an overview of the rendering capabilities of deep exploration. Now what I want to move on to now is technical illustrations and give you an overview of how, uh, how you can create technical illustrations in, in deep exploration. Now high quality technical illustrations are deliverable for, for many companies now. Uh, they're used for instruction manuals, um, they're used for assembly instructions for both customer uh, maintenance staff um, and it's essential that these illustrations reflect the exact product that, that they represent so that non-skilled staff or customers can easily relate to the images that they're seeing. Now Deep Exploration has a set of tools dedicated to creating such images and we're going to use this this transmission assembly so I can quickly show you how we can how we can go about creating them. Now firstly Deep Exploration has, a, has an illustrating viewing option in the, in the main toolbar so we can see what any model looks like as a technical illustration. Now if you're creating technical illustrations then there's a few key things that are characteristic of those illustrations. Firstly the, the thick and thin line definition between uh, outline and internal lines. Uh, secondly are the detailed views of hard to see areas and thirdly the call outs that reference perhaps a, a bomb table or a table of contents um, but also thrust lines as well. Um, they're, they're quite an important characteristic. So I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how we can create some of those some of those aspects on this on this model. Now what I've done here is I've just quickly selected a few uh, components, so outer casings and the lever at the top there. 
and we'll just quickly go in and create some callouts. So I have a I have an option here to to select everything in my in my parts list. So you can see I've done there, and then it's just as simple as as drawing those callouts. You can see that. We've got here a, a numeric callout, and we can uh, we can move those around into any uh, any area of the viewport we like. We can also change the change the settings. So if we wanted the uh, the part name, for example, different font, we can say that we want them to be in circles, rectangles, and there's a there's a huge amount. You can see the different tabs here. There's a huge amount of options available to you to to change stuff. We can change the leaders to to different arrows or dot heads or or whatever we want. So that's creating callouts. The second thing that I mentioned in that in that list of characteristic aspects for illustrations were were detailed views. So we created a detailed view earlier on when we were looking at markups. And it's no different here. Then we just just select the select the icon, drag a little circle around the around the area, and drop the detailed view somewhere else in the viewport. We can also change aspects of that view as well. So if we want to change the the outline, we could change change that to to an arrow head, like so. Okay, just uh, just apply that. Okay, so we've got our detail views in place. Another thing that we that we might want to put on here are the thrust lines. So it's a very simple process as well. We can just simply select the two components and create the uh, create the thrust line. Now a nice little feature of these thrust lines are that if I go ahead and move one of these bolts around then I'll have a little jog created in that line. You can see that, that jog's been created and we can move those, move those jogs around, move them up and down and anyone you know comes along and, and moves these bolts then those lines will always update. That's our line illustration created. Just show the output size, make sure it all fits in the fits in the box. And we've got a couple of different options for exporting this. The first of which is rendering to a to a vector image. Now um, most commonly you will render to a Adobe Illustrator file perhaps, um, and that's what we do here. Now Deep Exploration also comes with a free to download product called Deep View and it's a, it's a free viewer and what we're going to do is we're going to render to an AI file and then view that file within Deep View and this is a, a common scenario you could perhaps do this with clients um, and you would uh, ask them to download the viewer so that they can, they can view your files. Just here we can see that we can uh, specify those characteristic thick and thin lines. We've also got advanced settings for this. For, for added control over our, over our rendered image. So let's just go to Deep View and we can simply drag and drop this new new file, this AI file and there's our, there's our illustration. Now this is, a, this is a vector image so any one of these, these lines we can select and you know, if required then we, we can go ahead and, and tidy up that, that image. Okay, so something else that's quite characteristic of technical illustrations are, are cutouts and cross sections and there's a very comprehensive cross section tool within deep exploration. However, what I'll show you here is, is cutting out an aspect of, of this model or reducing an aspect of this model. So we'll just reduce these, uh, just minimize these detailed views. And I'm going to create a cutout so that we can see the internal gearing system of this transmission, but I just want to create a cutout local to the uh, to that main main housing. Let's say we want to cut a, a quarter of that main housing, and make sure we got some outlines when we when we cut that, and then select the casing, and we can see there that's created a a great a great view for us. We can then use our other option for exporting this and that's as a, as a raster image so we just render this just as we were rendering earlier on you can see we can we can save this image to JPEG I suppose PNG would be the most common formats to be used there TIFF perhaps and insert that into our into our technical publication okay so that's a that's a quick overview of 
technical illustrations. Um, as you see, quick and easy to create. Now there are a few other tools that we can go through before finishing off this demonstration. And we're working with CAD data here and notoriously through the design process we'll have a number of different iterations and changes to this data. Now what happens to our data here when, when changes are made to that CAD data? Well there's a product called Deep Server and that automates changes for you and automatically updates your work you know, with, those, with those relevant changes. However, that's a different product altogether. And what we can do in deep exploration is we can manually go through that process. So we've got a couple of files here which have been modified. And that manual process, all we need to do is simply locate the file which we, which we think has changed. And we can drag and drop and replace that modified file. So these two, two files here, we can just quite simply replace those. And then is that job done. If we go back to our to our markup view that we created right at the very beginning of this demonstration, then we can address some of this some of the situations here. So for example, you know, we can put a, put an added note on here and perhaps delete this this note here to notify the, the person reading this that that's been completed. We can simply update our view and if we go back to our standard view and then back to our, our new view we can see how that's been updated. This will also update our animations or our steps that we, procedures and uh, disassembly steps that we created earlier on. So we can see there how, how this step has been updated with those new parts. Now the final thing that we can do here is export this file and, uh, and maybe send it off or, or upload it for further markups or feedback. Now as mentioned before, the RH format compresses the files from being huge CAD files to files that are a much more manageable size. And we could easily upload this, this RH file to a, a central location so that someone else can look at it. And well, we can take advantage of the, of the 3D PDF format. And that's, a, that's always a good option. So inbuilt into Deep Exploration is a library of PDF templates. And those templates will capture all of the information that we have built into this file. So the animations, the different views, different markups and so on and so forth. So if we look at these templates here and we see we can choose from a, from a variety of these standard templates and it's very easy to create these templates as well. And the actual viewing platform that's embedded into, into 3D PDFs is, is based on deep exploration uh, software. So we'll just save this and wait for this PDF to, to open up. So in PDF format you have quite a few tools available to you um, so you can play these animations. We can orientate this, this model around. We have our bomb table at the side there on the left hand side. We can highlight all of those different parts. So I say orientate this around. We can play those different animation steps which we created. See that going on there? and highlight different models like so and of course we've got the the cross section tool which we can which we can utilize there so that's the end of this demonstration i hope this has been helpful i hope this has given you a, a good insight as to the capabilities of deep exploration 6.0 and shown you what great results you can get and how easy this system is to use.